now we are going to see the fifth unit that is it uh, logic families so the first topic of the fifth unit is nothing but ttl logic family so before going into ttl first we are uh, going to study what is logic family so there are several approaches used to produce different type of digital integrated circuits there are many approaches to produce digital ICs and each such a fundamental approach is called a logic family. Okay. There are many methods to produce digital integrated circuit and each such a fundamental approach is called logic family. Now we are going to see what is meant by integrated circuit. An integrated circuit is sometimes called as a chip or microchip. It is a semiconductor wafer on which thousands or millions of tiny resistors, capacitors and transistors are fabricated. So it is a semiconductor wafer on which thousands or millions of transistors, resistors, capacitors are fabricated. An IC can function as an amplifier, an oscillator, a timer, a counter, a computer memory or microprocessor. Okay. Yeah. IC can function as an amplifier, oscillator, timer, counter, computer memory or microprocessor. So now what is logic family? There are many approaches to produce different types of digital integrated circuit and each such fundamental approach is called logic family okay now digital op uh, ic's they operate with binary signals and are constructed with ic's so mainly this digital ic's <coughs> operate with uh, binary signal digital ic's can be classified into two categories first one is mos family it includes the following metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors. So, in mainly two categories one with the MOS and another one with the VJT. In MOS, there are PMOS, then NMOS, and CMOS. So, the digital ICs which is made using MOS family, there here we are having three <coughs> classifications one is meant by P channel MOSFET another by n channel mosfet and another by cmos complementary mosfet that this complementary mosfet is will be having both pmos and nmos now next one bipolar lo logic families this bipolar logic families is classified into two main categories one is saturated another one is non saturated logic family the saturated logic family means the transistors which we are using will be going into saturation and non saturated logic families means the transistors which are used to do, used in the logic family is will, will not be going into saturation so that is the difference between saturated and non saturated logic family in not in saturated logic families we are having resistor transistor logic that's rtl then resistor capacitor transistor logic rctl then diode transistor logic dtl then High threshold logic HTL, then transistor transistor logic TTL, then integrated injection logic I square L, then non saturated logic families consist of first one Scotty TTL and the second one emitter coupled logic. These two come under non saturated logic family. So in bipolar logic family, there are mainly there are two categories that is classifications or categories that is saturated and non-saturated. The difference is in saturated logic families, the uh, transistors what we are using will be going into saturation. And non-saturated logic family is nothing but the transistors what we are using in this logic family, it will not go into saturation. It will be working in <coughs> active region. Okay. In saturated logic family, we are having <clears throat> resistor transistor logic, resistor capacitor transistor logic, diode transistor logic, high threshold logic, tra transistor transistor logic, integrated injection logic. Okay, these are the um, um, things that is coming under saturated logic family. And in non saturated logic family, Scott key TTL and emitter coupled logic. So the characteristics of digital ICs are speed of operation, fan in, fan out noise immunity propagation delay power dissipation these are the characteristics the speed of operation fan in fan out noise immunity propagation delay and power dissipation these are the 
characteristics of digital ICs. So we are studying the characteristics. We can call these characteristics as the special characteristics. First, we are um, going to study what is fan out. So fan out is nothing, but it is also called as loading factor. This fan out we can also call uh, we can <clears throat> call it as loading factor. It is defined as a maximum number of logic um, inputs that an output can <coughs> drive reliably. So fan out is nothing but the number of inputs that a output can drive. How much inputs a particular output can drive? It is nothing but the fan out. A logic circuit that specif uh, specified to have it have 10 fan out can drive 10 logic inputs so if a particular circuit is having a, a fan out of 10 the meaning is it can drive 10 inputs then next one is fan in fan in it is a number of input that can be connected to the input of logic gate so fan in is nothing but to the input of a logic family how many input you can connect that is nothing called fan in Now, this is fan out. Fan out is nothing but the fan out of the gate is calculated from the ratio of this is um, uh, high level output. So, here this is a uh, gate and this gate is having a high level output IOH and this is a low level uh, output. So, it is having a uh, output of IOL. So, fan out of the gate is calculated from the ratio of IOH divided by I, I H. For high level input, it is a ratio of I O H divided by I, I H. Okay. So, this is the output and this is the input. So, next to for low level, high, H represent high level output and L represent the low level uh, output. So, for low level output, this fan out is nothing but I O L divided by I, I L. Next one is power dissipation the power dissipation is a parameter that represents the amount of power needed by the gate so it is a parameter that represents how much power is needed by a gate for the operation power is the product of vcc into icc so vcc is nothing but the supply voltage and icc is the current that is drawn by the circuit the current drawn from the power supply depends upon the logic state of the gate okay depending upon the logic state either it is 0 or 1 so depending upon the logic state of the gate the current drain from the power supply varies average current ic is equal to icch plus iccl divided by 2 that is h is nothing but high output and l is nothing but low output so the current that is drawn from the power supply when the output of the gate is high level voltage that is icch then ICCL is nothing but current that is drawn from the power supply when the output of the gate is low level. Next one, the average power dissipation is nothing but PD average is equal to ICC average into PCC. In a typical digital system, there will be many ICs and the power required by each IC must be considered. The total power dissipation in the system is a sum of the total <clears throat> the sum total of the power dissipated by all ICs. So, in a digital system, there are many ICs and the total power dissipated is nothing but the, it is a sum of the individual, uh, individual power dissipated by each ICs. Okay. Now, next is propagation delay. The propagation delay of a gate is the average transition delay for the signal to propagate from input to output when a binary signal uh, changes in value. So, you are giving a value so at the input and you are getting the uh, some uh, value in the output. So, the time delay um, between the applying the input and getting the output is nothing called the propagation delay. So, this is the input what you are giving and this is the output what you are getting. So, here the output is changing from 1 to 0 and here the output is changing from 0 to 1. So, this TPHL is nothing but the signal delay time between the input and output when the output changes from high to low level. So, here the output is changing from high to low level. One, here the output which is changing from 
low to high level so it is represented by tplh and here it is represented by tphl next we are going for noise margin so what is noise noise is nothing but the undesired signal that is superimposed upon the normal operating signal so noise is what is noise noise is nothing but the undesired signal that is superimposed on the normal operating signal so what is now what, noise margin noise margin is a maximum noise voltage added to an input signal of a digital circuit that does not cause an undesirable change in the circuit output so what is noise margin noise margin is a maximum noise voltage is a maximum noise voltage added to the input signal of a digital circuit that does not cause any undesirable change in the circuit of, um, uh, output so you are uh, due to some reasons noise is added so upon adding how much noise the value so uh, the the level so up to uh, which level uh, the output is not affected by the by by the addition of noise that is nothing but the noise margin okay it is a maximum noise voltage that can be added to input signal of a digital circuit that does not cause an undesirable change in the circuit output okay that is noise margin so figure of merit so figure of merit is a product of the speed expressed as a propagation delay time and power dissipation figure of merit is nothing but the product of propagation delay and power dissipation so if you multiply propagation delay and power dissipation you will be getting figure of merit so this is noise margin okay so this is voh and this is vol so noise margin is nothing but voh minus vih and in a, in a in other terms, it can be represented as VIL minus VOL. So, this is noise margin, expression for noise margin. Now, this is a forward characteristics of a transistor. So, you know that the transistor will conduct after cutting voltage. So, here the cutting voltage we are taking it as 0.6 and after the cutting voltage the current starts increasing this is the output characteristics of a uh, the transistor now so <coughs> below 0.6 volt this is cut off the our transistor will be in cut off region okay or it is in open circuit the current ib and ic is zero so above 0 0.6 it will be coming into active 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 it will be coming into active region and here the value of ic is equal to hf into ib so hf is nothing but gain okay beta that is current gain then above 0.7 it will be going for saturation so at the saturation voltage across vc is 0.2 at active the voltage is 0.8 so at a saturation the base current is will be greater than or equal to ics by hfe now it is cut off this region is cut off then this is saturation this is active okay these are the regions of the <laughs> characteristics so now this we are going for TTL. TTL is nothing but transistor transistor logic. What is TTL? Transistor transistor logic. Now it is a logic family implemented with bipolar process technology that combines or integrates NPN transistor, PN junction diodes, and it diffuse resistors in a single monolithic structure to get the desired logic function. So what is TTL? TTL is a logic family which is implemented by using bipolar uh, technology or bipolar transistor that combines or integrates NPN transistors, PN junction diodes and diffused resistors in a single monolithic structure to get the desired logic function. Okay, this is nothing but TTL. So TTL will be having you know, transistors, diodes, that, uh, that family will be having transistors, diodes and resistors. Okay. 
the NAND is NAND gate is a basic building block of this TTL. So what is the basic building block of TTL? This is NAND gate. Different sub, sub the different subfamilies in the TTL is standard TTL, low power TTL, high power TTL, low power Scott key TTL, Scott key TTL, and advanced low power Scott key TTL, advanced Scott key TTL, and fast. Uh, TTL. These are the different sub subfamilies of TTL. Transistor, transistor logic. Now, so we are going to see the TTL in detail. Now, the TTL is nothing but an improvement of slight improvement over DTL. Diode transistor logic. This transistor transistor logic is nothing but it is nothing but an improvement of slight improvement over the DTL diode transistor logic. So this DTL gate have three different types of output configuration. This transistor transistor logic is having three different types of output configuration. First one is open collector output. Second one is totem pole output. And the third one is tri-state output or three-state output. So, how many output configuration it is having? TTL is having, it is having three output configuration. One is open collector output. Second one is totem pole output. Third one is three state or tri state output. So, totally we are having three types of um, output configuration in TTL. So, common characteristics of TTL. So, the common characteristics of TTL are the supply voltage is 5 volt for all that we are, supply voltage what you are giving is 5 volt then the logical zero output voltage is 0 to 0.4 volt so the output what you are getting for a logical zero is between 0 to 0 0.4 volt and for logical one output voltage that is from 2.4 to 5 volt so you should not confuse the output voltage and input voltage the output and input are having different voltage levels so for logical zero for output voltage it is 0 to 0.4 and for logical one for output voltage it is 2.4 to 5 volt for logical zero input voltage is 0 to 0.8 volt so for input for logical zero will be pro providing 0.8 but for output the logical zero what will be getting is 0 to 0.4 and logical in one for input voltage is 2 to 5 volt the noise immunity what you are having in this transistor transistor logic is 0.4 4 volt. So up to 0.4 volt noise if it is added the output will not change. If the, if the, if the noise added is having an amplitude of more than 0.4 volt then there is a possibility of changing change in output. Okay. So we will be getting erroneous output if, if the noise added is more than 0.4 um, Volt. So this is the characteristics, common characteristics of this uh, transistor uh, transistor logic. That is, the supply voltage what you are giving is 5 volt for for inputs. Oh, sorry, for outputs, the, for logical zero it is 0 to 0.4. For logical one it is 2.4 to 5. And for input for logical zero it is 0 to 0.8 volt. And for logical one it is 2 to 5 volt. And the noise immunity what you are having is 0 0.4 volt. Now before going into this different types of configuration so we have to study some uh, important terms that is uh, first one is passive pull up so what is passive pull up the resistance used to pull up the output voltage of a logic circuit from low to high in response to the appropriate input so uh, passive pull up is nothing but pulling the output from low to high with the help of resistance it is called passive pull up now active pull up a circuit with active devices active devices transistors okay so a circuit with the active devices which is used to pull up the output voltage of a logic circuit from low to high in response to appropriate input is called active pull up in, in simple we can tell us pulling the output from low to high by using the active devices is called active pull up and that uh, pulling the output from low to high um, by using the passive devices like trans uh, that uh, resistor it is called passive pull up then we have to study what does mean by logic swing 
the difference between the voltage between high and low level the difference of voltage between high and low level is called logic swing now we are going for the transistor transistor logic okay so already i have told you that transistor transistor logic is a modified circuit of diode transistor logic so this circuit is nothing but the circuit of diode transistor logic so here we are having three diodes that is nothing but the inputs and you are having two diodes e1 and e2 and you are having one transistor q now this circuit we are modifying it into a transistor transistor logic now we will clearly check uh, check how we are modifying so this is nothing but the modified circuit this is ttl uh, so transistor transistor logic circuit with open collector output so here the output is open and if you get a, if you want to get a um, high voltage then you have to connect a, um, you have to add a passive pull up okay so this is the um, transistor transistor logic circuit so now i will tell what difference you have made so we have converted these three diodes okay so we have instead of these three diodes here instead of these diodes we have used this uh, transistor this transistor q1 is a multi emitter transistor so while tra studying transistor we have studied that transistor is nothing but two diodes connected back to back what is transistor transistor is nothing but two diodes connected back to back so these three emitter base junction of this transistor q1 can be considered as these three diodes so instead of these three diodes what we are here we have made means we have added three emitters for this transistor q1 so that okay now instead of this transistor b1 what we have this uh, collector based junction of this transistor q1 act as this diode d1 so the emitter based junction of this diodes act as the inputs a b and c and the collector based junctions of that uh, this diode q1 act as this diode d1 this is the second modification what you have done the third modification is instead of this diode d2 we have used the transistor q2 so what you are using instead of this diode d2 we are using a transistor q2 once again i am telling i am explaining so now this is the circuit is nothing but diode transistor logic circuit so we are modifying this circuit and we are getting the transistor transistor logic circuit now this is the transistor transistor logic circuit okay now first modification what you have done in this circuit is instead of this diodes here we are using one tran transistor q1 this transistor q1 is a multi emitter transistor so since transistor can be considered as a uh, considered as two um, uh, diodes connected back to back so this emitter based junction of the transistor can be considered as diode so here you are having three emitters so it can be considered as three diodes so instead of three diodes we have used a multi emitter transistor here so then second modification is instead of this diode d1 this Collector based junction of this transistor access this diode D1. Okay. So, third modification is instead of this diode D2, we have used a transistor Q2. So, this is now we got the circuit. Now, the basic circuit of our um, TTL is nothing but a NAND gate. So, first we are considering the first condition that is when yeah all the inputs is low so what is the first condition what are first condition uh, we are uh, assuming we are assuming that all the inputs are low so in ttl for input voltage we have to give 0.2 volt okay so we are considering all the inputs are low so we are giving 0.2 volt at the inputs a b and c already I have told that this emitters are like this. 
so this is anode and this is cathode so here you are giving a giving point 2 volt okay point 2 volt and its anode is this is anode it is connected to this 5 volt so its anode is more positive than cathode what happens its anode is more positive than cathode and here you are giving for all the inputs you are giving low so so you're giving point 2 to here point to here and point to here so these three emitter base junctions this emitter base junction is nothing but it, it acts like a diode it is forward bias why it is forward bias is its anode is connected to 5 volt and its cathode its cathode is, you are giving point 2 volt in cathode you are giving point 2 volt in anode it is connected to 5 volt so a diode will conduct if its anode is more positive than cathode so here you are having point 2 volt and here you are having 5 volt so this diode will conduct okay this the diode will conduct like this and no current will flow in this direction so this diode this character based junction will be reverse biased and it will not conduct so this transistor q will q not will not conduct so q3 will not conduct okay so if the q3 is not conducting the output what we are getting is nothing but high so in The animation you can clearly see now we are giving providing all the inputs as low so this emitter base junction is forward bias so current flow in this direction and this collector base junction is reverse bias so it will not conduct so since this uh, this collector base junction is not conducting this transistor q naught will not conduct so if q naught is not conducting q3 will not also conduct so the output is low okay So, if actually if these two transistors want to conduct the voltage, what you need at this point is 1.8 volt. Okay. Actually, if this Q2 and Q3 want to conduct the voltage, what you need is 1.8 volt. But here you are giving, you are providing a 0.7 volt. And since this diode is conducting, if a diode is conducting, the voltage across is 0.7. So 0.2 plus 0.7, totally 0.9 volt. So you are having 0.9 volt at this point. So you are having 0.9 at this point. But if this Q2 and Q3 want to conduct, so you need 1.8 volt, 1 volt here. But we are not having 1.8 volt. You are having only 0.9 volt. Okay. So this Q2 and Q3 will not conduct and the output is low. Sorry, the output is high. So if this transistor Q3 is not conducting, then the output is high. So once again, I am telling that uh, we are considering all the inputs is low. So when all the inputs are low, the voltage uh, we are giving at the input is 0.2 volt. And at the base of this transistor Q1, we are having only 0.9 volts. So if this transistor Q2 and Q3 want to conduct, then you need at least 1.8 volt. Okay. So we are, but only we are having 0.9. So if these two want to conduct, then you need 1.8 volt at this base. But we are having only uh, 0.9. So this transistor is cut off, and this output is high. So this is when all the input is low. So next we are going for the next condition. when any input any one input is low so this this condition is similar to the previous one if any one input is low also one, one of this uh, base emitter junction will be forward bias and the voltage what will be having at this is 0.9 and in order to conduct this it will be it must have a voltage of 1.8 at this base but we are having only 0.9 so this q3 is again cut off and the output is I. So, in an AND gate, if you are giving all the inputs low, then output is high. If you are giving any one of the input low, then output is high. Okay. Then we are going for that. Now, we are considering all the inputs as high. 
so all the inputs are high means we are providing 5 volt to the uh, emitters so here <coughs> this uh, emitter based junctions will be uh, reverse biased how means so we are considering we can consider the reverse bias junction as a diode okay we can consider this reverse bias junction as a diode and we are providing 5 volt to the cathode and the other end is connected to this is uh, this will not be exactly 5 volt why because here you are having a resistance and you are having a drop it must be some 4.7 or 4.8 volt so here your cathode is more positive than anode so here your transistor will not conduct and it acts as an open circuit okay it will not conduct this is your diode and its cathode is at 5 volt and anode it is connected to 5 volt but due to this uh, resistance and all some voltage drop will uh, happens and this point will be less than 5 volt so it will not be 5 volt and it will be less than 5 volt when it is coming at this point so it will be reverse biased so what happens it's a cathode is more positive than anode so it will not conduct so this emitter based junction will not conduct but collector based junction will conduct collector based junction will conduct and current starts flowing in this direction q2 will conduct again q3 will conduct so the output is now low so if this transistor q3 is conducting and the output is low if the transistor q3 is not conducting then output is high so now i will explain one more clearly please listen so initially we have checked the condition for all the inputs low and all the uh, any one of the input low so two condition we have checked for both uh, for that both uh, both the conditions this emitter based junction we have given the input as point 0.2 and this junction is forward biased and this character based junction is reverse biased and these two transistors not conduct so the output is high there now here we are giving 5 volt to the inputs a b and c so this diode is reverse biased this emitter based junction is reverse biased but this character based junction is forward biased and current starts flowing in this direction and it will make q2 to conduct again q3 will conduct okay the but voltage drop what you are getting at this point is 2.1 volt how means the conducting diode here you are having a 0.7 q2 it is conducting it is having a 0.7 another 0.7 so totally you will be getting 2.1 volt at this point okay so when you are, when all the inputs are high the transistors q2 and q3 will conduct and saturate the base voltage at q1 is equal to the base voltage here is equal to this here you are having a 0.7 since it is conducting here a 0.7 and another here a 0.7 totally it is nothing but 2.1 so not only conducting it is saturating okay so it is going to saturation previously we have taken it as 1.2 Eight. why because we are not considered saturation we have considered only active so 0.6 plus 0.6 plus 0.6 okay so there we are considered 1.8 but here since q1 q2 q3 is uh, the uh, factor based function of q1 then this transistor q2 and q3 are conducting so we are getting a voltage of 2.1 at the base of q1 okay so the output what you are giving getting is nothing but a yeah, low since q3 is conducting the output what you are getting is low once again i am telling uh, when all the inputs are high this emitter based junction is reverse biased and collector based junction is forward biased so this forward biased junction will conduct and it will make the transistor q2 to conduct 
and the, uh, the due to the conduction of q2 the q3 will also conduct and it will go into saturation so the output of the circuit is nothing but low okay So the green indicates it is conducting and the voltage what you are getting at this point is 2.1 volt. The output transistor saturates to a output and goes low to 0.2 volt. Okay. If it is in saturation the voltage that is 0.2 volt that is nothing but low. Okay. this open collector output gate so and the output of several open collector ttl gates can be tied together with a single external resistor this logic is called this type of connection is called wired and logic so when you are tying the outputs of one or more uh, gates ttl gates to a like external resistor single external resistor then such a configuration we can call it as wired and logic so what is wired lot uh, and logic connecting the outputs of more than two or three gates uh, ttl and it's a single resistor then it is called wired and logic the wired and logic gives a high level uh, gives a high level only if all the variables are Hi. otherwise the function is low so even if you are connecting two or three outputs to a single resistance the total output will be high only if all the outputs are high this is open collector output gate so the wired AND gate is not a physical gate but it is but only a symbol to designate the function obtained from the indicated connection okay this is a graphical symbol of what wired AND gate so connecting two uh, NAND gates to a common resistor so this is nothing called wired AND connection so open collector gates can be tied together to form a common bus okay the three inputs are zero here we have connected one two three uh, four open collector ga uh, gates to a common bus now so the three of the inputs i1 i2 i3 are zero which produces a one on the bus the fourth input i4 can now only transmit information through the common bus line into inverter five okay so here three inputs are you are making three of the inputs are zero so which produce a one on this bus the fourth input i i4 can now transmit information to this bus into inverter 5 okay because these three are zero and it can't send only i4 can send so the ttl open collector outputs it can sing current sing current means it can take current from the output gate there are two important things, uh, two important words. One is current sinking and an, an, another one is current sourcing. Current sourcing is nothing but providing current to the output gate or providing current from this gate to the gate which is connected to that gate is called current sourcing. Current singing is nothing but uh, getting current from the uh, uh, gate which is connected to, to that particular gate. That is called current is um, singing okay so i will uh, clearly explain with the diagram so you are having one gate you uh, assume that you are having a ttl land gate you are connecting one ttl can uh, uh, gate to you are connected one ttl this is a ttl land gate you are connected one ttl land gate this is a TTL NAND gate. You are connected on TTL, uh, sorry, on a TTL NAND gate to a TTL NAND gate. Now, if this this TTL NAND gate provide current to this, you take this as TTL one and TTL two. TTL two is connected to TTL one. 
Now, if TTL1 is providing current to TTL2, it is nothing called current sourcing. It is called current sourcing. And similarly, If, if TTL2 is providing current to TTL1, then it is called sinking. Okay. Now, this open collector output can only sink current and get current and it can't provide current. So, it, is, it, is, it can only sink current. So, and it cannot source current. So here, in order to get an high output, we need a, a pull-up resistor. So you can use either an a passive pull-up by using a resistor or you can use an active pull-up to get the high output voltage. Okay. So since the um, uh, output is open, so in order to get a high voltage, we need a, or a high output, not high voltage, in order to get a high output, we need a pull-up resistor. The open collector outputs are required whenever logical outputs are connected at a common point. So when we are preferring this open collector means when there is a need to uh, connect uh, logical outputs to a common point, when we when we then we will be going for a open collector outputs. Okay. When there is a need for logical output to be connected at a common point, then we will be going for open collector outputs. So, this is nothing but current sourcing and current singing. The logic families are characterized on the basis of current flow from the output of one circuit into the input of another. So, if the output of TTL gate is high, a reverse emitter current of 40 milliampere flows from the driver gate transistor to the load gate. Load gate is nothing but the uh, tra transistor which is connected to the particular gate. That is the load transistor and the driver gate is nothing but the, the uh, gate to which the load gate is uh, connected. It is called driver. Here the driver gate or transistor is known as current source. Next, if the output of a TTL gate is low, an emitter current of 1.6 milliamps flow from the load gate transistor to the driver gate transistor. The driver gate transistor is known as current sink. Already I have explained. If a TTL gate is supplying current to the gate to which it is connected, it is called current sourcing. If the TTL gate is getting current from the gate to which it is connected, it is called current sinking. So, in simple, we can say like that. It is nothing but if it is pro if a particular gate is providing uh, current to the uh, to it is current sourcing. If it is getting, it is called current singing. Next, we are going to see TTL gate with totem pole output. So, previously we have seen TTL with the open collector output. So, here we are having TTL with the totem pole output. So, this configuration we are calling it as totem pole output. This Q3, Q4. This Q3 transistor Q. Initially, we are not having this transistor Q4 and this diode T1. And this um, <clears throat> collector of this Q3 is open. That, uh, that configuration we call it as um, open collector output. Now, this is nothing but the, uh, the totem pole output. So, this is a totem board output. This configuration 2, 3, Q4, and D1 this forms a uh, totem board output. And at this point, you are taking the output Y. Okay. This is output Y. So, similar to the <coughs> previous uh, open collector output, first we are considering all the inputs are low. So, all the inputs are low means you will be providing 0.2 volt here. 0.2 volt and 0.2 volt. So, we know that this emitter base junction will be forward biased and this will contact and current starts flowing in this direction. So, collector base junction will be 
reverse bias. So this since this collector base junction is reverse bias, this Q2 will not contact and Q3 will not contact. Okay. So Q3, Q2 will not conduct and Q2, uh, Q3 and Q2 will not conduct. And at this case, we are having only 0.9 volt. How means this diode is conducting and voltage across it is 0.7 plus here you are providing a 0.2 totally 0.9 volt here. If this Q2 and Q3 want to conduct, actually you need minimum 1.8. Uh, uh, considering that this uh, three are in active region, so the a point six here, a point six here, and a point six here. So one point six plus point six plus point six, one point eight minimum one point eight. If it is in saturation, we have to go for uh, two point one. That is point seven plus point seven plus point seven. So two point one. But we are only considering it is just uh, just to start conducting. So cutting voltage only we are taking, not the voltage across that uh, diode, we are considering only the cutting voltage. So cutting voltage here is 0 0.6, here 0 0.6 and 0 0.6 totally. So cutting voltage here, it must be 0 0.6, here 0 0.6, another 0 0.6. So totally 1.8 we need, but only we are having 0.9. Okay, so this transistor Q3 will not contact. Okay, but the current will flow in this direction and it will make Q4 to contact. So what happens? The Q3 will not contact, but the current flows in this direction and it will uh, make Q4 to contact. So the use of this Q3, uh, the use of this uh, diode D1 is it will prevent Q3. Uh, Pre prevent Q3 from conducting when Q4 is conducting. Okay, so the use of this diode D1 is it will prevent Q3 from conducting when Q4 is conducting because current starts flowing. So due to that, <coughs> sometimes Q3 may come into conduction. So it will prevent when Q4 is conducting. So once again, I am explaining clearly. So, when you are giving a low input here, that is 0 0.2 here, this emitter base junction will be forward biased. Okay. And this collector base junction will be reverse biased, and Q2 will not conduct, Q3 will not conduct. Okay. And the voltage at this point is 0 0.9. How means here 0.2? And the voltage across the diode when it is conducting is 0 0.7. So totally 0 0.9. Huh? Again, in other words, if Q2 and Q3 want to conduct, the voltage at this point should be 1.8. How 1.8 means 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6. Just we are considering the cutting voltage. So we are not having 1.8 and we are only having 0 0.9. So Q2 and Q3 is not conducting. But at that time, the current starts flowing in this direction and it will make Q4 to conduct. And the use of this diode D1 is it will prevent Q3 into conduction when Q4 is conducting. And the output what you are getting is high. In symbol, we can tell that if Q4 is conducting, then output is 1. And if Q3 is conducting, output is 0. Now Q3 is Q4 is conducting, so output is 1. So in some other combination, the Q3 may conduct. So at that time, the output is 0. So now when you are providing the input low, that is 0 0.2 to all these things, you are getting a high output. Okay, so the first condition is over. Now we are going for the second condition. That is, we are taking one of the input as low and all the other input, these two input high, you give 5. So, these two, these three are, and these three can be considered as three diodes connected in parallel. So, this first emitter terminal, it will conduct, why? Because it is forward biased and it will conduct. And the symmetry base junction will contact 
and this collector base junction will not contact then q2 will not contact and q3 will not contact and current start flowing in this direction and q4 contact and output is high so if one of the input is low or all the input is low the output what you are getting is high so i have clearly explained if one of the input is low or all the inputs are low then the transistors q2 and q4 so q3 will not conduct and the output what you are getting is high because the transistor q4 conduct and you will be getting a high output the next condition is all the inputs are high next condition all the inputs are high so when you are giving all the inputs high this emitter base junction is reverse bias what is bias reverse bias but this collector base junction is forward bias current start flowing q2 will conduct and q3 will conduct q3 will conduct so since q2 is conducting more current will be flowing in this direction so the amount of current which is flowing here will be less so when q2 is conducting more current will be flowing in this direction through q2 so the amount of current which is flowing to the base of q4 is less so q4 will not conduct and q3 will conduct and the output is low so this is nothing but the working of ttl with the totem pole output so this is a totem pole configuration and i have clearly explained the operation of uh, total, uh, ttm with ttl with totem pole output here we have to consider three condition first condition is all the inputs is low when all, all the input is low the emitter base junction is forward biased the transistor q2 and q3 will not conduct but q4 conduct and we will be getting an output as high similarly if any one of the inputs is low <laughs> here also in this condition also q2 and q3 will not conduct but q4 will conduct and we will be getting a high output now the last condition is all the inputs are high the transistors q2 and q3 will conduct and more current will be flowing through q2 and the amount of current which is flowing through q4 is less so q4 will not conduct and q3 conduct and the output is low so we have clearly studied the working of ttl gate with the totem pole output okay now the operation so this transistor q1 is a two uh, two emitter uh, NPN transistors, which is equivalent to two NPN transistors with their base and emitter terminals tied together. The two emitters are two inputs of NAND gate. The diodes G2 and G. Actually, another thing I have to tell. Sometime we will be connecting a diode here. So you will be connecting a diode like this. Here on diode. Here on diode and here on diode sometime you will be connecting the diodes like this so these diodes are used to, to prevent the negative voltages in order to prevent the negative voltages we will be connecting the diodes like this transistor q1 is a 3 emitter npn transistor which is equivalent to 3 npn transistor with their base and emitter terminals tied together the three emitters are the three inputs of NAND gate when all the inputs are in logic high state, the current flows to the base collector PS, PN junction, diode of transistor Q1 into the base of transistor Q2. The transistor Q2 is on to saturation with the result that the transistor Q4 is switched off and Q3 is switched on. So Q2 and Q3 will be in uh, conduction and Q4 will be in switched off. This produces a logic low at the output with VOL is equal to 0.4 volt maximum when it is sinking a current of 16 milliampere from the external loads representing by inputs of logic function being driven by the output transistor Q3 is referred to as current sinking or simple we can say that the transistor the transistor the Q3 is nothing but current sinking or pull down transistor. So we can simply say that when you are giving all the inputs as 
as high than q1 base emitter junction of sorry base collector junction of uh, pn uh, that uh, transistor q1 is in forward bias condition it will contact and it will make q2 to contact again it will make q3 to contact and q4 is switched off so at that time it acts as a current sinking circuit it acts as a current sinking circuit and the transistor q3 can be considered as a current sinking uh, transistor or pull down transistor okay so this is a condition when you are having all the inputs as high when all the inputs are high electrical phase junction of the transistor q1 is forward bias and current flows through that um, junction and it will make a q2 on and it will make a q3 again on the q3 will go into saturation but q4 is off and the output what you are getting is low at that time that transistor will be uh, that the transistor q will be sinking current okay sinking current it will be getting current from the output gate so it, it is also called as pull down transistor or current sinking transistor so next is so we are having one diode in the totem pole configuration the function of that diode t1 is it will prevent the transistor q4 from conducting even when a small amount of current when output is low so when the, when the output is low there is a possibility of q4 for uh, going into conduction so now this uh, diode d1 will prevent that q4 from going into conduction when the output is low q3 is in saturation and q4 conducts slightly in the absence of d1 so if, if there is no d1 the q4 will conduct slightly so the input current i low h in the high state is nothing but the reverse bias junction diode leakage current okay when all the next we are going for when one of the when one of the three inputs or all the inputs are low so now we are considering all the inputs are low or one of the input is low if any one of the input or all the inputs are low the emitter base junction will be forward bias and run, start flowing in that direction and q2 is cut off so when q2 is cut off q4 is driven into conduction and q3 is cut off and the output is high and this produces a logic high output and in this mode it will act as a current sourcing the transistor q2 will be uh, uh, refer to as current sourcing or pull up transistor so the to totem pole output stage the uh, transistor q3 and q4 is called the totem pole output stage and in, in such a arrangement either q3 or q4 conducts at the time depending upon the logic state of the input the totem pole arrangement and output has certain advantages so 